Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Peggy Cummins, a Welsh-born stage and film actress who worked just a few years in Hollywood but left behind an indelible performance as the lethal beret-wearing robber in the noir classic Gun Crazy. The petite blonde actress who played the carnival sharpshooter turned murderous bank robber in the sexually charged 1950 film noir classic. Why Peggy Cummins' talent was never really explored fully by Hollywood. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Peggy Cummins hit Hollywood with guns blazing. Hollywood film actor who starred in the now-revered 1950 B-movie Gun Crazy, a forerunner of Bonnie and Clyde. Peggy Cummins was petite and demure-looking, but had a strength of personality and no-nonsense approach that ensured she remained firmly grounded. Her tiny frame also concealed a powerful voice with a hint of huskiness that gave it a sensual quality, although she was usually cast as the wholesome rather than the sultry type. She worked just a few years in Hollywood but left behind an indelible performance as the lethal beret-wearing robber. The sexual harassment scandals that rocked Hollywood were front and centre, and broader issues of race and gender, who has power and who doesn't, were hard to avoid. All of these issues must eventually be addressed, though it's hard to imagine a group more likely to turn this into an exercise in narcissism than Hollywood folks. It's also an interesting time to look back on the issues the sex scandals have taken off of the front burner. Remember when folks simply thought Hollywood was corrupting the minds of our youth and, possibly, just possibly, contributing to the absurd levels of gun violence which ravage America. This is as good a time as any to remember one very unique, very important Irish actress whose life intersected with these important issues. Her name was Peggy Cummins. She was born Augusta Margaret Diane Fuller in Prestatyn, Denbyshire, Wales, on December 18, 1925. She was the daughter of newspaper editor Franklin Bland Fuller and actress Margaret Cummins, and great-granddaughter of the Irish architect, actor and novelist James Franklin Fuller. Born in Wales as her parents took shelter from a storm on their return home to Ireland, Cummins was educated in Dublin and learned dance at the Abbey School of Ballet. When she was 12, actor Peter Brock introduced her to the Dublin Gate Theatre. That same year, Cummins acted in a London production of Children Review, Let's Pretend, which premiered on her 13th birthday. She continued to perform on stage in productions such as Junior Miss and Alice in Wonderland throughout the 1940s, but Cummins landed her film debut with a small part in the now lost British film Dr O'Dowd. She made her first film just as World War II broke out, and her screen career saw her playing perky younger sisters and other fluffy roles that barely did justice to her talent and versatility, but did demonstrate her incredible screen presence. Cummins started her career in theatre when she was just 13 years old, taking the stage in London and quickly landing roles in British films, including Old Mother Riley Detective and English Without Tears. The next year she was discovered by Fox mogul Darrell F. Zanuck and brought to Hollywood, where she was chosen, among many girls, to play the titular character in Forever Amber. Darrell F. Zanuck, who was then head of 20th Century Fox, brought her to the US in 1945, where she starred in Moss Rose and Escape. Cummins came to America when, as a virtual unknown, she was cast for the lead in the highly anticipated 20th Century Fox film. Zanuck had decided that Cummins was the amber he was looking for. She was a teenager and almost immediately given the lead in his big film of the age, Forever Amber, based on the historical romance by Kathleen Windsor. In 1946 she began filming the part of Amber St. Clair, a young beauty making her way in 17th century England, shooting opposite Vincent Price as Almsbury. The part was racy and low-cut dresses had already been designed. The costume department took one look at Cummins, decided these would not do at all and scrapped them at great cost. This was just the first problem. Halfway through production, Zanuck saw the rushes and decided that the director, 
John Stahl had to go. He was replaced by the autocratic Otto Preminger, who decided to start again from scratch. His first decision was to sack Cummins. The early stages of the film itself, he said, looked hopelessly old-fashioned. As for Cummins, he declared, she's not up to it, she is amateurish and looks too young. The polite explanation given to the public was that she did not have costume experience. Hundreds of stills were shot of her in period costume, but then the director was sacked, filming started all over again, and Cummins was replaced, as was Price. She was eventually replaced by Linda Darnell in what could have been a tremendous career setback. The fact is that in its present stage of development, Hollywood simply doesn't want the beautiful, grave, classical actor any more than it wants natural vivacity and that individual dual charm, the young, talented actress with a notion to use her talent. The disappointment for Cummins' replacement was palpable. I wasn't sexy enough, said Peggy Cummins, explaining why she was replaced in the lead role she had been shooting for months. Her first leading role in an American film was playing the blackmailer Bella Dare, Rose Linton, in the film noir Moss Rose. The film was praised by the press, but was a box office flop. Zanuck claimed that the losses from the film amounted to $1,300,000. Cummins subsequently appeared in a handful of American films, she played Eleanor Apley, daughter of an upper-class Bostonian family, in the romantic comedy The Late George Apley. She played Dora Winters, an escaped prisoner's love interest, in the thriller Escape. She played Carrie Greenaway, the love interest of a Wyoming-based horse owner in Green Grass of Wyoming. Cummins then returned to the United Kingdom to have a role in the romance film That Dangerous Age, about a neglected wife who finds romance with a lover. Cummins played a supporting role to the film's female lead, Myrna Loy. Cummins returned to the United States to play a femme fatale role as bank robber Annie Laurie Starr in the film Gun Crazy. The film was released by the film studio United Artists. This was Cummins' last appearance in a film shot in the United States. In retrospect, the film has been considered culturally significant, and chosen for preservation by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically or aesthetically significant. Initially dismissed by the New York Times as pretty cheap stuff, the low-budget Gun Crazy was directed by Joseph H. Lewis and secretly co-written by the blacklisted Dalton Trumbo, who devised a tale of sex and violence and of love destroyed by greed. Gun Crazy was made for $400,000 in 30 days in 1949. Cummins' final US project was to provide her most satisfying and enduring screen role. In Gun Crazy she plays a sideshow sharpshooter who hooks up with an ex-soldier, John Dole, and persuades him to join her on a bank robbing spree destined to end in tragedy. It was one of the most effective post-war films dealing with the frustration of the military returning to the monotony of civilian life and her powerful performance as the glamorous but ruthless manipulator gave Cummins the chance to explore a darker side to her character. The film went on to become a revered B-movie film noir, cited as inspiration for Nouvelle Vague directors, and deemed an important forerunner of Bonnie and Clyde. Until Gun Crazy, I'd played pretty blonde types, so I loved the idea of this character, Cummins said. This was a meaty part I'd been hoping for. Peggy Cummins was gun crazy, but not so crazy about Hollywood. There, Peggy appeared in several films, including one that the Americans consider a classic. However, at the time she preferred to come home and her subsequent British films were not major efforts, although Hell Drivers with Stanley Baker is highly regarded today. Despite the lack of meaty roles in Hollywood, Cummins recalled with pleasure mingling with the stars. Mentioned of her rumoured affairs with Cary Grant and Howard Hughes would be met with feigned incredulity, and she would neither confirm nor deny such speculations. But she resisted the charms of celebrities and returned to England at the end of 1950 to wed Derek Dunnett, heir to Carter's tested seeds. The marriage lasted until his death in 2000 and produced a son and daughter. 
Family became her priority, but she continued to act on stage and screen and never regretted her departure from America. In the rest of the 1950s, Cummins mainly worked in British films. Among her best-known roles in this period was the role of female lead Joanna Harrington in the cult-themed horror film Night of the Demon. Receiving modest praise in its original release, their film has since been evaluated as one of the gems of the horror genre. In the early 1960s, Cummins only appeared in comedies. They included the divorce-themed farce Your Money or Your Wife, the crime comedy Dentist in the Chair, and the veterinarian-themed comedy In the Doghouse. In the Doghouse was Cummins' last film appearance. However, the acclaim for Gun Crazy did not come until years later, and Cummins decided to retire from the movies when she was still in her thirties. Her few subsequent appearances were guest star roles in television. During the 1970s, Cummins was active in a national charity, Stars Organisation for Spastics, raising money and chairing the management committee of a holiday centre for children with disabilities in Sussex. The charity, known as SOS, became an independent registered charity in 2001 and in 2008 changed its name to Stars Foundation for Cerebral Palsy. Cummins is a trustee of the charity, which is run entirely by volunteers and raises funds for communication and mobility aids for people with cerebral palsy. In December 2017, Cummins suffered a stroke and died in London, where she had spent her last years. She died 11 days following her 92nd birthday. The movie scene was changing and the type of gentle comedy that had been the staple of her career was no longer in vogue. While she was a versatile, talented and professional film actor, it's tempting to imagine that the stage was where Peggy Cummins really shone. The energy and sincerity of her performances must have made her theatrical work a joy to watch. In recent years, she received well-deserved attention at festivals and screenings, although she was not one to analyse her craft and didn't look back on her career with regret or nostalgia, preferring to live in the present and take pleasure in her family, travels and meeting people. She received compliments and correspondence from admirers all over the world and was always polite and gracious, if a little bemused by their attention. However, watching her screen work, above all her electric performance as the gun-toting Annie Laurie star, it is clear that she had a talent that cinema never really explored to its fullest. The tendency was then that if you're short and blonde and reasonably pretty, you always played rather pretty parts, she said at a 2012 screening in Hollywood. To tell you the truth, I always wanted to play all the Betty Davis parts. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Peggy Cummins? Her erotic energy and style eventually became a cult favourite.